Shalom. Welcome to another segment of A Thought for the Week. Our latest attempt at making it as easy as possible for you to study a little bit of Torah before the week is out. This week in the uh, shul, we will be reading two portions of the Torah. Vayakhel and Pekude. These are the last two portions in the book of Shemot, in the book of Exodus. In uh, these parshas, among other things, we read about the instructions that God gave Moshe and the way Moshe implemented these instructions in creating the tabernacle in the desert, the uh, roving temple. And many fascinating details. There's, there's a lot there, and it's all very interesting. One of the many interesting details is that some of the wool that was spun was actually goat's wool, and the Torah says, the women who spun the wool, the Torah says, tavu es ha'izim, they spun the goats. Now, it's a fantastic visual, but I don't think that's actually what happened. You don't spin goats. So why does the Torah say that? So Rashi, the primary uh, commentary on Torah, says this. What they actually did was, they spun the wool while it was still on the goat. So they didn't share the wool first and then spin it. They spun the wool into fabric and then shore it off the goat, and that's how they made this fabric. Now, that's fascinating, but who cares? Why do we, uh, why do we want to know this? So, the Rebbe of Blessed Memory points this out. He says, Rashi is careful to, uh, to tell us that this is a, an, an extraordinary craftsmanship that they were able to uh, create fabric while the wool is still on the animal. And that's the point of this teaching that if you have an incredible talent, even if it's outlandish, even if it's something far out, even if it's something different, but especially if it's something very applicable, if you have a talent, there's only one reason, and that is to further the cause of making this world, this physical world, into a godly and holy place. So if you have a talent, if you have a skill, if you have any particular thing that you're good at, don't squander it. Don't waste it. Make sure you're using it to its fullest potential and make sure that you're using it to further this cause, the cause of bringing Mashiach by making the world a little bit holier, a little bit kinder, a little bit brighter, a little bit better. And with this we can bring Mashiach, the ultimate Redeemer. Which brings me to another subject. This Shabbos we will also bless the new month, the month of Nisan, which begins next week. The month of Nisan is, of course, the month of redemption, the month of Passover, the month of Pesach, everybody's favorite holiday, unless you own a home and then you have to clean it and it's not so favorite. But once the holiday starts, it's everybody's favorite holiday. Which brings up a few questions. What are your plans for the Seder? Do you have the hand-baked round shmura matzah to be used at the Seder? Have you filled out one of those forms where you sell your chametz, your leavened uh, products, to a non-Jew? Of course, you can see all this stuff online at www.chabadbythesea.com and if you put a forward slash Passover on there, you'll probably get to our mega Passover site. But in any case, check it out. Let us know if we can be of any help, of course. We would love to, either with the Shmura Matzah, or you can join us at a public Seder, a community Seder, or if we can be of help selling your chametz, whatever it is. Anything that we can do to help you make your festival of freedom a little more free, a little more festive, we'd be glad to do so. And of course, in the meantime, Shabbat Shalom, and all the very, very best.